again, we we had gotten to the point where the type of um, debris that we were bringing out was um, was very large. It was very um, hazardous because we were getting down where the stability of the building was starting to be in question. We got down to where we had very few missing at that point. Uh, we had been documenting, um, of course, the people that, that were coming out and how many were left unaccounted for. Uh, we had a good idea of where they were gonna be in that rubble pile based on uh, the work that we had done in the days before by documenting their office location and so on and so forth. And um, we got down to where we were looking for uh, two victims. And we felt like they were gonna be almost at the very bottom of the rubble pile. Well, I'm sure that they are uh, take, have taken every caution that they can take uh, with listening devices, with their search dogs, with, uh, with the way that the rubble pile is and, and the, just the visual uh, ability to look at that and see what if the what you're looking for in any kind of hope is, is a void area. Uh, if there's a voided area that's big enough to sustain somebody, uh, that's when you think you might still find somebody alive. When you get to the point that you believe there's no more areas voided big enough to sustain that life uh, and you're down like that and you don't have anybody um, so you don't, there's no sounds on any listening devices going on and so forth, uh, then, then that's when you start considering to do those, uh, make those kind of decisions.